Hi, welcome back. We are continuing the process of installing Moodle locally on a computer. So we've gone through the process of moving the Moodle code folder. We have not done anything with the permissions. We're not going to because this is just going to be a local copy. Nobody else is going to see it. And uh, so moving forward, now we come down to configure Moodle. And uh, in the last video, I was on the local host and I prematurely clicked the Moodle folder and it began to, uh, it took me to this page where it was about to install, um, actually install Moodle and I thought, oh, whoa, 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 we don't want to do that yet. Uh, but let's go back to the installation uh, quick start and let's read these instructions. So it says in the Moodle code directory, you're going to find a file called config-dist.php and copy it to a new file uh, called config.php. Now, if you have ever used WordPress, um, I, I think I mentioned in a previous video uh, that uh, my background is primarily WordPress. Well, I used to... I. I used WordPress before you could actually do any, you know, one-click installations or anything like that. It was uh, kind of complicated to get set up. In fact, it was very similar to Moodle. And one of the things you had to do was you had to uh, change the name of a configuration file. So I continued reading these instructions in Moodle and it's possible I might have missed something, but I am going to go ahead and see what happens if I try to continue the installation process. So we're going to try to kind of skip through this and go ahead and go through the steps of the installation process. Let's see what happens. Maybe we'll get an error message. Maybe not, but let's go ahead and find out. So click next. Okay. Um, confirm paths and that all looks good to me look at that it's already picked the uh, it's picked the web address it's picked um, the directory but it's also picked the data directory and this is where it gives you a little bit more information than I think it has on the installation screen it basically is telling, saying this is where all the files uploaded uh, by the users are going to go. So for example, say you've got uh, students that are going to upload uh, PDFs or Word documents. This is where it's going to go. It's going to go into Moodle data. It's never going to actually go inside the uh, Moodle site itself. In that sense, it's a, it's, the uh, file structure is a little bit different uh, from WordPress where you actually do go if you're uploading files um, into WordPress it's actually going into the WordPress directory in most cases okay so let's click next let's see what happens okay choose database driver and yikes we got a whole bunch of choices here um, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it alone my SQL sounds good to me okay here we go so we got the host we got the name and then we're gonna have a username and password and this is where I'm gonna pick a real complicated username admin and one two three four by the way this is a local installation Please don't do this if you are actually setting up a website uh, publicly. Click next. And okay. All right, so we ran into an error message. Access denied for user admin at local host. Password. Okay, I wonder. Okay. Remember we did that 
let's go back to the documentation and scroll up a little bit okay remember we used that username password combination let's try this I'm going to use Moodle user your password okay so it looks like uh, hopefully something something's happening okay so there was was asking me for a new username and password but it's actually um, referring to what what it's asking for is the username and the password to access the database so if you've ever used WordPress before um, it kind of has that same setup you you need to unless you're running some sort of a script where it will automatically set up the configuration for you uh, it, you'll have to uh, set up a username and password okay so let's go back to the Moodle installation and Moodle stands for modular object yada 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 says it's uh, all this stuff I'll say yeah sure I read it and understood it and uh, one thing I do want to point out is that the installation of Moodle does take a little bit of time and it is not like WordPress in the sense that you know you run it and it gives you that funny uh, message something like uh, you know expecting something else sorry to disappoint um, I love the way WordPress installs you know it's pretty simple when I see screens like this I I panic because you know I'm thinking what, what on earth does this mean you know PHP extension anyway we're running this locally we just want to get to the point that it actually works and at the bottom it says your server environment meets all minimum requirements so that's good we'll just ignore all these other things it's telling me to check it but it's okay we just want to get it working and by the way this is it this does bring up a, a good point that it boy if this is slow running locally you want to be careful what kind of host you put it on uh, because uh, you wouldn't want it you know taking forever yeah I don't know why this is running so slow and uh, this is unedited I'm just recording it the entire time just so that you can see how long it takes um, every time I've installed Moodle it's taken a long time it is it definitely is not a quick install uh, like WordPress is so you just want to be patient hopefully won't get any error messages like something broke or whatnot Okay, I saw it, saw it budge a little bit there. It's taking so long. There we go. Okay. All right. We 
you see up here, it looks like it's still running. That's because if I scroll down, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Look at all this stuff. You can see on the see in the sidebar. Yeah, it, it is installing a bunch of stuff. I have to admit that this is one of the things that makes me the most nervous about Moodle because I'm I'm familiar with WordPress enough to where you know if something breaks, I know how to reinstall it and get it up and running. But this is where it's it's outside of my comfort zone. Like, I look at these. What are these things? System. I'm guessing these are just different components, and I'm gonna look at them. They're just enormous, enormous amount. But I do have to say this, as far as a learning management system and one that's open source, I think it's pretty powerful. And that's kind of why I wanted to put these videos together, kind of to, you know, get myself uh, out of my comfort zone and actually figuring out how this thing works. Okay, here we go. We finally got it. It's finally at the end. So... Uh, if you could time the video, you saw how long that took. That took like almost five minutes. Um, so let's click continue. Okay, so we've gone through the worst part of the installation process. And now we're at the part where it asks for, you know, your information. Um, I'm going to just... Uh, Go ahead, click update profile. Hopefully it will accept the password that I put in there. It will ask for a somewhat complex password. So you can't uh, get away with just putting in something like 1234, even though you're installing it locally. Okay. Looks like some stuff's happening. Okay, then here we are. The last part of the installation process. You type in full site name, uh, let's call it, uh, I don't know, University, and University, hello, this is the front page, okay, and then let's change the time zone. I am definitely not in Europe. Sorry about that flickering. Not sure what's causing that. Okay, self-registration. Um, we'll just leave this alone. Leave it at default. We're just trying to get to the point where it's actually finally running. That's what matters right now. Yay, here we are. We finally have Moodle installed. It looks pretty boring, but it is up and running. We've got, you know, all the stuff. We've got places to put courses. There are no courses set up, of course. But um, it is finally installed. So let's go back to the installation quick start. Let's see if there's anything else we need to do. So... We installed the Moodle code. We didn't really configure it. We didn't really go through this process. Uh, it was able to take care of itself. Um, and then as far as installing Moodle, all we had to do was go to the Moodle directory um, on, my, on the local host in order to start the installation process. And then it has this little thing about running a cron job. Um, we're not going to worry about that right now. In fact, it says you can see cron for more options. And that's it. If you are at this point, you are, you know, give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, well, that's it. We have covered the whole process of just getting Moodle installed locally. There's a lot of security uh things that we would never want to do on a live site but again as I have uh, said before we're just trying to get this set up so that we can 
uh, take a look at how it works. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Um, I am hoping in uh, future courses to, uh, not future courses, future uh, videos to actually show how to set up courses and all of that stuff and even get to the point of uh, developing uh, themes and plugins and these are things I have not done before for Moodle so this is going to be uh, something new new for me as I mentioned before my background is WordPress I've developed themes I've made plugins for WordPress you know nothing great nothing nothing you would ever really pay money for um, or at least not on a that's actually not true I, I did get paid for it but nothing nothing really spectacular um, but as far as Moodle goes I have not made anything for it I've, I've set up some courses just to see how that works um, but I'm really hoping to uh, figure out how to uh, develop themes and uh, plugins as well Anyway, hope you've enjoyed these short videos. Hopefully we'll keep them even shorter and more to the point and um, that you'll get something out of them. Thanks for watching.